So when you're looking at rotating an object, you need to not only think about how much mass that object has, but also where the mass is distributed. The physical quantity that takes into account those two things is this thing called moment of inertia, which you've probably seen in your textbook, might have been a little bit confused about. Well, it turns out that a code like this one that we've got on the screen here and available in the description below is a wonderful way to calculate a moment of inertia for a given object. Um, for example, here I've got set up a ring of particles. The red spheres here are uh, is, is each one atom or each one slice of mass here. Um, and so we've got a ring set up around an axis of rotation. That's what the white cylinder is, is the axis of rotation. And we're gonna use the code here to calculate the moment of inertia because the code makes calculating the moment of inertia really easy. All we have to do is start here uh, with moment of inertia equal to zero. And then we're gonna add to that MOI value the moment of inertia for each one of these atoms, for each one of these spheres over in the red ring. And so really all we do, we figure out how much mass each of those is gonna have. So it's the total mass M divided by the number of atoms that we have here. That's just what LEN means. It's counting the number of items in the list atoms. And then we just set up a loop. So we loop over each item, each atom here in the list atoms here. And basically we add to MOI the value for the moment of inertia here. Now the moment of inertia for a specific particle is always the same thing. It's always the mass times the square of the distance between that atom and the axis of rotation. So in this case, our axis of rotation is going out along the Z axis. So we're gonna imagine this thing rotating around like a steering wheel here. And so to get that distance, to get the distance from each of these atoms to this cylinder, we're not worried about how far away they are in the Z direction. We're only worried about how far away they are in the X and how far away they are in the Y. So that's just gonna be the X position squared plus the Y position squared that we have in the parentheses here. So once we've done that, we just add this calculation, the mass times the distance squared to the moment of inertia. And then we're gonna have it print the moment of inertia. Now we're gonna have it printed a couple of ways. First, we're gonna display the, the actual number, the actual value of the moment of inertia based on the value of M and R that we have. M is the mass of this whole thing and R is its outermost radius. We're also going to report it as a fraction of the MOI divided by MR squared because if you've looked and seen any of these moment of inertia tables, you know that every moment of inertia is always some fraction times MR squared. And so this is just showing you that formula. It's showing you the fraction times MR squared. Now for a ring, we know that the answer is supposed to be one because it's basically a bunch of uh, a single particle summed up. And so you do get a one here. You get one times MR squared, just like you would expect. Now again, this is all dependent on the rotation axis being the Z axis, again, illustrated by the cylinder here. If you wanted to do a different axis, suppose you wanted to rotate the thing about the Y axis, like you'll be asked to do in uh, one of the problems at the end of this video, you would need to change this calculation. You can definitely change the cylinder up here, but again, this is just for visualization up here. You actually have to change the calculation down here to get the distance from the Y axis. So that's something you have to figure out as part of that problem. Another thing you'll be asked to do on the problems at the end of this video is work with different shapes because this calculation works no matter what your shape is as long as all the atoms, the, the, the particles are stored in this list called atoms. So let's scroll up, see how we made this shape. Uh, here we've got the section labeled make a ring. So here we're making a ring. Basically, uh, we're making a ring in the XY plane. So we're keeping Z fixed at zero because all of these particles are gonna have a Z value of zero. You can see them in the middle of the Z axis there. And then we're going to set up a loop over angle theta because we're gonna loop around a circle. Anytime you're looping around a circle, you wanna loop over an angle. So we'll start at theta equals zero over here on the X axis. And then we wanna have basically what the distance is between each of these atoms. So this DS, this is a fixed distance between the atoms uh, because that's gonna be important in making sure that our atoms are uniformly distributed when we get to a more complicated shape in a minute. And so we set up our loop over theta, basically the way a loop works, and I'll have a link uh, in the description below to more information about loops and about lists in, in Python. We set up the loop here that's going to run as long as theta is less than two pi. Two pi, you know, is how many radians there are in a circle. So we're gonna loop around till we get to the end of the circle or back around at the beginning of the circle. 
And basically what we do is access our list here, atoms. It starts out as an empty list up here in line three, but then in line 13, we're going to add to that using the append function, each of these spheres. So these spheres are gonna have a position given by r cosine theta, r sine theta, same way you have for a unit circle, and then the value of z, which is zero in this case, but it will be changing in a minute when we get to more interesting shapes. Uh, we give each of them a color, we give each of them a small radius, and then we increment theta. And the way we pick the increment for theta here is just using the arc length formula. So we take ds divided by r. If I wanted my atoms to be farther apart. So say for example, I don't need them to be this close together. I could change this to a 0 0.2 and that's going to change my theta increment. I'm gonna make my atoms a little bit farther apart. I see I've got a little bit of bunching up here, but that doesn't really affect the answer here it looks like. So it looks like that's an okay value. I'm gonna stick with 0.1 just because the closer they are together, the better off we are. Although as you'll notice that the longer the code takes to run, the closer they are together. And so that's how we set up a ring. Another shape we might be interested in would be a hollow cylinder. So you can imagine taking this ring and copying and pasting it up along the Z axis, or basically taking this and extending it. I can do that if I set up another loop, which I've what I've done here under this section called make a hollow cylinder. What I want you to pay attention to here is that this section, starting with theta equals zero and going all the way down to theta equals theta plus ds over r, lines 21 through 26 are exactly the same as lines 10 through 15 above. All I've done here is taken this earlier loop, copied and pasted it over here. So this whole loop, this, this line 21 to line 26, this chunk creates a single ring. Then to create multiple rings, I've set up another loop outside of that. So this is a loop within a loop. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna loop over this ring once, then we're gonna move forward in the Z direction, loop over this ring again, then move forward in the Z direction, loop over this ring again. And that's gonna allow me to have a stack of rings that will make a cylinder. So the, literally the only thing I've changed is added a loop around this loop. I basically wrapped one loop around the other. And now we're incrementing over Z. We're gonna go from Z equals negative 0.5 to Z equals 0 0.5. And then down here, we increment Z by a little bit. I've made DZ 0 0.1. Again, the important thing is that it's a, a small number. Uh, let's run this and see what we get now. So here we have our cylinder. You can see it goes along the Z axis as expected. So it's made a bunch of copies of this ring that we just had one of before. Now we've got multiple of them. And this uh, can still be run through the MOI calculation down here because this calculation down here to get the moment of inertia does not care what the shape is. It has no idea what the shape is. It has no idea how the atoms are distributed. It just knows there is a list of atoms. And as long as every atom is in that list, then this thing will calculate the moment of inertia. Now you notice we got the same answer that we did before. That's because the moment of inertia doesn't care how your atoms are distributed parallel to the axis. We could keep adding more and more along here. It's still gonna come out to be one times MR squared because the only thing that matters is the distance from the axis out to the atom. It doesn't matter how far along the atom is along the axis. So one of the problems you'll be asked to do at the end of this video is create a filled in cylinder. So you'll need to add yet another loop around this loop. Again, it needs to go around, right? It needs to wrap around both of these loops so that you have while and then an indentation while and then an indentation while. And you'll need to loop around the value of R, right? Because this radius R here is fixed. You'll need to loop that from zero out to the maximum value to fill this in with more atoms to make it solid so that you can get the answer for that. Let me show you one other shape that we'll work with. Let's comment out the cylinder and let's make a hollow spherical shell. So for this case, again, we're working with the loop for a ring. So remember here, you can see how the loop is the same. We've just added another loop on the outside. The difference is this time I'm not keeping, I'm not giving Z a nice um, even uh, spacing. I'm making Z go out to the radius R and what I'm doing is I'm changing this little value of R here. This is gonna represent the distance from the axis. So this is the thing that's going in now for the radius of the ring. Let me show you how it turns out looking. Here we've got our spherical shell. You can see it's a bunch of rings. So just imagine uh, rings going around here like lines of latitude on a globe and the radius of those rings 
is changing as we go around the globe, as we as we loop around different values of Z. Again, we've still got the same Z loop. We've just changed out the capital R, a constant for a little r, a variable. And what we end up with is this spherical shell. And we get out a value that is two thirds MR squared, just like we would expect from a moment of inertia table. So what I'm gonna do is leave this code available for you in the description below with just the ring uncommented so that you can work with the simplest case first. There'll be a couple of questions asking you to try out different shapes. That's making changes to the loops up here. And a couple will ask you to change the axis of rotation that's changing the distance calculation here.